thing. Get inside fast. Sure, sure. Any place in particular, sailor? That chair near the desk. Keep your hands in your lap. Okay. If it'll please you, Mr. Detective, I'll be very glad to. After all, you're my guest, and I should be nice to you. Now we talk like a little lady, huh, Rose? Vince LeBar picked up the letters from you as scheduled, and you're getting ready to run because you killed Terry, and you'd rather not be around for the question and answer period, right? I didn't kill her. I, I just knocked her down. No. You didn't kill her. You just slowed down her breathing somewhat with a pajama sash. You're wrong, copper. I Skip only... it. Doesn't add any other way. Go on, answer it. Who is it? Mr. Shirley. What's going on in there, Mr. Setter? Landlord. No, the jerk who lives in the top half of this place, along with a few thousand Mr. French Mr. Setter, if you don't open this door, I'm going to call the police. I distinctly heard a noise. And I Come on in, Mr. Shirley. Well, what? Well, what's going on in here? Who are you? Never mind that. Now get on the phone. Call the police. Huh? Oh. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, certainly. Oh. Operator. Oh, operator. I want the police. 2824 Haven Hurst. Look, Hero. Yes. You're a little mixed up about some things. Yeah, and you're just a kid to straighten me out. Those letters you got at Terry's place were written by Joe Temple. Was your boyfriend Vince heading for Temple when he left here? I can't. Try hard, oh. sister. All right, all right. Maybe he was. Now leave me alone. Not quite. Hey, you, Mr. Shirley. Oh, yes? In that desk next to you, there's a gun. Keep it on until the law arrives. Oh. Ladies want it for murder. Well, yes, but what if she should... Yeah, then shoot, Shirley, fast. Because if you don't, she'll kill you. Tell the cops I'll fill in the blanks later. Oh, now, now, wait, why must you leave? Why don't we both watch you? Because a guy named Joe Temple needs my help a lot more than you do. The home address Temple had given me turned out to be lights in a quiet house on a quiet street named Marlboro. I was there out of my car and running for the front door when they came. <laughs> I chucked my gun out of the holster, got close into the building, and moved up until I was on a line with a pair of half-open patio doors. And I saw something I hadn't expected. On the floor that was littered with a broken lamp, pieces of vase, and overturned furniture was Vince Labar, doubled up, dead. And standing over him, his face the color of soft cement, a 32 dangling in his limp right hand was Joe Temple. When he saw me, he tried to talk, but the words jammed in his throat. Oh, oh. When I stepped into the room, he began to tremble. Oh, oh, I... I shot him. I couldn't help it. He was gonna... Sit down, Temple. Get a hold of yourself. Got any brandy around? Over on that table near the phone. Oh. He was out of his mind, Marlowe. An absolute maniac. He said he was gonna kill me. So you lunged for him. There was a fight and you came up with a gun, huh? Yeah. And when he started for me again, I I pulled the trigger. And then I did it again. And a third time. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. Drink this. He brought the letters back, Marlowe. They're inside on the floor where he threw them. He said they didn't mean anything anymore. That he and that girl in the slacks had taken care of Terry. Take it easy, Temple, easy. He seemed to go crazy. He said I was a wife stealer, the cause of his trouble, and that I deserved death. Well, that's when I jumped at him. It was terrible, Marlowe. Yeah. Well, between the two of us, we've just about got all the answers. Which is usually a good time to call the police, huh? Well, what do you mean, just about got all the answers, Marlowe? What else is there? Jess Freeman. The guy Lieutenant Matthews told us about when we were over at Terry's place, remember? Oh, yes, that traffic crash in Empire, Oregon. But why should that figure in this, Marlowe? It shouldn't, but uh, I think it does. I'm inside, Detective Lieutenant Matthews speaking. Marlowe Matthews, uh, another dead one on the Terry Labar case. Oh, no. Yeah, Vince Labar, her husband, he was shot. Uh, who did it, Marlowe, do you know? Yeah, guy named Joe Temple. It was self-defense. We're coming in, Matthews. I'll take that gun, Temple. You get the letters. Let's go. When we got into my car and started downtown, Temple was more relaxed. And he talked easily until we passed Vince Labar's sparkling green sedan parked a block away. Once again, close into the shadows, and once again, empty. Real empty. The sight of it closed him up tight for the rest of the trip. When we walked into police headquarters and through the quarter of a mile of glossy corridor leading to the door marked homicide, he didn't open up any. But it didn't matter, really, because it's police rule never to talk to two men about the same thing at the same time. And I was first. Matthew said hello without shaking hands, waved me into an uncomfortable seat, and then lit his pipe while I brought him up to date. 
Then it was his turn. So Rose Facetta killed Terry Labar so that she could get the letters Joe Temple had written, huh? Mm-hmm. Did this so that her boyfriend, Vince Labar, could raise a lot of fuss in divorce court with the letters, file a countersuit, that kind of stuff? That's the whole deal. Yeah, with Temple making it a double header by shooting Vince when Vince came to kill him. That's it, Matthews. Yeah. If you believe Temple. Huh? And if Temple hadn't slipped. All right, now what are you getting at, Phil? That when I was on the phone with you early at night, you asked me if Temple or I knew anything about a Jess Freeman who was killed in a traffic accident in Empire, Oregon? Right, right, but you didn't. No, no. Nor did I mention the town of Empire to Temple. Ooh. Yet a half hour ago, just before I called you, Temple came up with that name. Oh, then Marla, you... Oh. Hold my calls, Mooney. Marla, you mean I to... mean that Joe Temple killed Terry Labar. Rose just knocked her out and got the letters. Temple strangled her while she was still unconscious. Yeah, but why? Because a guy identified as Jess Freeman got himself killed in a traffic accident. So? A guy who I think was actually Holland Casey, Terry's two-fisted assistant, who together with Joe Temple was crossing the boss lady. Yeah, but Marla, And that left look... Temple in a very hot spot. To save himself, he had a kill. Can you prove all this, Marla? No. Not a word of it. It's conjecture. But conjecture that fits, Matthews. Yeah. When Temple found Terry unconscious in the garden, that was his chance. He took now it. Now, look, Phil. Phil, you're guessing at night. Sure, percent... sure I'm guessing. But not in the dark. I know how these guys think and act. I've done too many cases not to know. Now, listen for a minute, will you, Matthews? Phil, I got Will you listen? Facts? All right, okay. Now, look. Temple had to get those letters back, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the last one in particular, because in the last one, this is the way it's got to figure. He had lied to Terry about being in San Francisco with Casey yesterday. When actually Casey was in Empire, Oregon. Yeah, when Casey was killed up there, the fact was bound to come out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good reason. Matthews, will you let me finish, Temple. please? All right, finish. Temple knew Terry would find out. He knew that she couldn't stand a liar and a partner who'd double-cross her. Temple knew that she'd get him and ruin him if it took her the rest of her life. So he came back to get the letter before she could read it, but she hadn't left town as planned, huh? Ironically enough, because she didn't want to miss one of his letters. Yeah, but look, I'm a policeman, Phil. I gotta have facts. All right, all right, you're the policeman. You got labs and technicians. You'll get the facts. And I'll bet you it figures just like I say. Yeah, okay, Phil, okay. And another thing, Matthews. What? When you talk to Temple, who's holding the packet of letters now like a real good boy... Yeah. ...you'll find the last one missing. It'll be in his pocket. I'll bet you on that. Well, that ought to do it, Lieutenant. Yeah, with one exception, Phil. Huh? How did Temple maneuver all this? Getting the letters from Rose Facetta, then setting up that self-defense deal. I don't know. But my guess is that Vince got the letters from Rose just before I arrived at her place. But when he got into his car... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Temple was waiting, slugged him, drove back to his own house, dropped the body in the living room, shot him when he heard you coming? Something like that, Matthews. Uh -huh, uh -huh. See if you can't get it out that way. Yeah, well, huh? don't worry, Phil. If it's true, we'll get it out. It'll be true. Oh, uh, now would you ask Mr. Temple to come in, please, Mr. Mullo? I'll be glad to, Lieutenant. Uh... Say, Temple, Lieutenant, I'd like to see him. All right, Marlowe. I, I think I can speak coherently now. Good, good. They like to get the facts straight in there. Go ahead. Yes, of course. Good night, Marlowe, and thanks for your help. Oh, good evening, Mr. Temple. Sit down and start talking. I got into my car, the new day was starting to push the black out of the sky. And the early morning air smelled fresh and cool and clean. Yeah, the whole night had been confused and complicated. But I knew that by the time Matthews had finished with Temple, there'd be no questions left unanswered. <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? If everything could be that way. No questions left unanswered. The Adventures of Philip Marlowe, bringing you Raymond Chandler's most famous character, star Gerald Moore, are produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and are written for radio by Robert Mitchell and Gene Levitt. Gerald Moore may currently be seen starring in Republic's The Blonde Bandit. Featured in the cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Elliot Reed, Dora Singleton, Georgia Ellis, Bill Lally, and Hugh Thomas. Detective Lieutenant Matthews is played by Larry Dobkin.